Now, I got asked after putting a video on yesterday uh, when I was fishing in the River Doon. Uh, I had a top dropper of a Caddis, a Caddis pupa, and this fly here is the, the pattern I was using. And uh, so, this is the fly I'm going to be tying. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a light dress in the fly, it's tied in a dry fly hook, really. But I want it near the top dropper and uh, I want it to sit. And it's, it's just lightly tied, but it works. It's an, it gives an impression of two or three flies. It could be anything really, uh, especially well. It's tied to suit the caddis pupa, but uh, when olives are coming off, this is a great fly as well. Now you can tie this in different styles. Now, thread I'm going to be using is a rusty brown Uni 80. This is a size 12 Ultimate Dry. Now I have waxed the thread, so I'm going to tie it way down. Tie on. Uh, the rib. Now the rib of the fly is this neon uh, one-o thread from Uni. Now there's different colours in this. I think there's the one called the big fly, or it's I can't remember the right name, but it's got a heavy thread like this, and it's ideal for for ribbon. So now I'm going to take it down, come round the bend slightly, then I'm going to tie in some pheasant tail. Just normal pheasant tail. You can use the either cock bird or the hen bird. It's up to yourself. I'm going to tie this in close to the tips, but I'm going to let it take away. I don't, I'm not too fussy. I want it to be reasonably thick, so I'll take away the tips. Now to keep the body the right thickness, or the to build it up slightly, I'm using material. I'm just tighten the thread up. We tied too far there, but we can come back down. Take a thread right up to the your rib and the uh, pheasant tail. See where you are. It's fine. Yeah, I'm going to be using. This is dyed CDC now. If, if you haven't got this, is dyed olive, mm. like a brown olive with ideal colour as well. Uh, but this has got the yellowy side to it, as you can see. Now. Yeah, as I say, you can use a dubbin. Just uh, if you haven't got this, just use a dubbin. This is the domestic type duck, white duck, which I dyed. Uh, pull this in. Now the company I bought the CDC from was called Premier Angling from uh, from Ireland. So catch this in. Just pull it into the tip. You wind up. Two thirds, or at least two or three quarters of the way, even. There's just a short thorax on this one. Now, I'm going to wind this up like a hero, but I'm going to wind towards myself so that when I rub it, it protects it. I'm just stroking back some of these fibres. Now, to tie it off, you've got to come over the, the CDC by a turn and a turn onto the hook. And again, see what it looks like. That's fine. Now, the waist of this I'm going to be using uh, for the, the thorax. These ends, just leave them. I'm going to bring over the pheasant tail. I'm just going to pull it in and I'm going to catch this in with a good three or four turns just to hold it at this point and tidy that area just to give me an idea of what it looks like. I've got all the material, that's fine. Now what I want to do there is just lift these CDC feather fibres, sorry, back out of the way. We do a turn at the back. Now what you do is wax this thread so it gives you grip. And then we're going to nice straight turns and quite close rib the body all the way up on the pheasant tail. Now as I get to the top here I take the thread turns off, to which I was using to hold this down. And then this last turn, when you catch it on, lift the pheasant tail up, do a couple of turns with the, the neon thread, make sure it's secure, and then we can trim that away. See how that looks. 
fibers at the back in the white trim. Just leave these here because uh, it's hatching cardus you're looking at, it just blends in with the rest of the fly. You could take them out if you want, but I just leave them. If, long, if they're too long, they're not going off. So they to reduce it. It's fine. Yeah. Now for the hackle I'm using, now I've got lots of grey partridge. Now, I've not got a lot of brown partridge, but so I always dye some of the grey. And this is a, a nice brown. So I'm basically going to take away the fluff, the base. Now I'll get a couple of flies out of this. So I'm cut a small V into the stem, so I've got a right and a left fibres. Leave that piece on my desk for my next fly. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to offer the fibres either side of the shank, you can see there, using the, the waist of the pheasant tail, because that's a thorax cover, just to separate it. Two or three turns, these are quite loose just to get it to sit. Let me up. Have them quite long, don't be shy. I like the fibres when these long because they do represent the hatching caddis and the legs are really long in the caddis. Just tidying this area up. Now the CDC feather we used in the body, there's the tip of it, or the base of it, sorry. So what I'm gonna do is trim away the the remains. Sit on my finger here, both sides. And then I'm going to use that as my dubbing. Dubs is really easy, so just lightly dub it on. As you can see, I'm going to start to wind from the eye or the head end area up to the, th the thorax cover. And we need a wee drop more. Just build it up. Make sure things are tidy. Come back through with the dubbing, heading towards the eye. Stroke back anything going forward, just throw it back. Three, four turns. And for the horns I'm using some bronze mallard, so two fibres, just bring them 90 degrees out from the stem then tear them away. Now don't have these too long. Just sit in there, that's fine. So I just catch them on the top, a couple of turns, fold back the waist. And then trim that away. Relax your thread, you stroke back any fibres going forward. Make sure you can pull over your pheasant tail. There returns. See how it's sitting? That's fine. You can trim this away or you can fold it back. I'll trim it away so you can see what it's like. So trim that away. Now, what you do here, just put a wee bit of varnish onto your thread. Uh, it basically helps to catch this in and sets it really hard. As much as the wax will give you grip, so will the, va the varnish. And then Quick finish. Turn away your thread. And there you go. And that's the pattern that I used just yesterday. And uh, this is a top dropper fly. So what we have to do now is just varnish the head all the way around. Take your rice if you can, just and then I'm just gonna use use a, a feather or something just to clean the the eye out or your needle. There you go. 
It's not really got a name, it's just a top dropper cardus. It's, it's, it's a nice style, it's, as you can see, rough and ready. Uh, it ties really well, it's got good, it sits, it's the ideal type of style of pattern that you want on the top, the top dropper. And it worked, it's re it worked really well. Now, probably give it another coat of varnish, give it a nice bright head, and, uh, and that's it, really. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe. It, it doesn't cost anything, it, it just basically allows. So when I put a video up, you get a message to say, Davies put a video up. <laughs> and then you can watch it, so hopefully you like it as well. So anyway, thanks again, and until next time.